Hi everyone, it's Miss Eckert. I'm here on the third day of our language lesson to read some more about rainforest frogs with you. I hope you had a, a good time yesterday reading your expository nonfiction book or articles that you found on the internet or a phone or any other place. Maybe you have some magazines at home as well. I know I am enjoying my koala book. I just began it last night. I'm going to do some more wondering and questioning today at the end of today's lesson during independent reading time to see if I can answer more of my wonderings about koalas. But first, we're going to go revisit Flashy Fantastic Rainforest Frogs, read the last part of the book, see if we can answer any more of our wonderings or questions from last time, and then maybe add on some new ones based on the information that we're going to hear today. So let's look at our chart and see which questions we've answered already. Which of the things we wondered were explained in our reading yesterday? We made a list of things we wondered about. Are rainforest frogs like pond frogs? We found out that they were similar in some ways, their sizes, their shapes, and different in others, like their colors. Rainforest frogs are almost all brightly colored, like our flashy book talks about. We wondered why rainforest frogs are so colorful. The author hasn't addressed why they are the colors they are in the rainforest, except for saying that the poison dart frogs are colorful so that, that animals know to stay away from them and not to touch them. We learned it on this page. We wondered where the tiny frogs lived and in which part of the rainforest the, uh, the other frogs lived in, canopy, understory, or forest floor. And in the book, we learned on page six that many frogs lived in the canopy and the understory. Many of them never went down to the ground. We wondered why the eggs didn't have shells. The author hasn't addressed that yet. Maybe we'll learn that today. We also wondered, why do frogs need such a wet place to live? We're not sure about that either. We know they like hot, tropical, wet places, but the author hasn't said why. We wondered, how can a frog swallow a rat or mouse? Frogs are fairly small. And how could they swallow something like a small rat or a mouse? We may learn that today. We also wondered what helps the frogs' toe pads stick. Yesterday the author talked about how the frogs would jump from leaf to leaf and hang on with one toe pad before the other foot came to help them hold. Perhaps there's something on the underside of their toe pad that helps them stick onto the leaves be curious to know that today. Maybe the author will explain. And what animals eat frogs? What is a predator to a frog? The author hasn't answered that specifically yet, but in this picture, the illustrator showed pictures of birds and monkeys. Perhaps we can infer that those are some of the animals that eat the frogs. We also wondered how the poison kills the predators that do eat the frogs, the poison dart frogs. We're not sure exactly how the poison works to make the animals die or get sick, but it did say that the, that, that hap the color said, don't make them say, don't touch me. How does a blowgun dart work? The book showed a picture of what we can infer is the blowgun dart in the native hunter's hand, but we're not sure exactly how the blowgun dart works. Perhaps we can find this answer in another book or look it up online. We also wondered, does this mean tadpoles eat the frog's eggs after we read how the frog lays eggs in different puddles? 
Going back to the book, we learn that the frog lays eggs, which become tadpoles, in different puddles. And then, once the tadpole hatched, that the frog would go back to the individual puddles and lay infertile eggs, that means eggs that can't hatch, inside the puddles for the tadpoles to eat. So the tadpoles do eat the frog's eggs. And how did the poison from the frog's skin turn into helpful medicine? We don't know the answer to that, but we know scientists are working on turning um, the poison dart frog's skin, the poison in their skin, into helpful medicine. So how can it be helpful for some people and po deadly poison for others? As you can see, we found a lot of our answers to our wonderings in the book, but some of them have not been answered. While I read today, please listen for the answers to the question that we have charted our wonders that haven't yet been answered, and also think of some new ones. The last part of the book I'm going to read today talks about how st some types of rainforest frogs are becoming extinct or dying out. Frogs need homes to live in. When forests are cut down, frogs and other animals have no place to live, so they die out. Frogs that live in a limited area are especially threatened or in danger. The blue poison frog, for example, is found only in small parts of forest in the South American country of Suriname. If its home is destroyed by people harvesting wood, this frog will become extinct. So it too will die out if people are harvesting wood, meaning cutting down trees to make things like paper or homes. Frogs have been on Earth for more than 150 million years. But today, frogs are disappearing quickly from some parts of the planet. No one is sure why. Some fear that the increase in ultraviolet light reaching Earth may be to blame. The ultraviolet right, light is also called UV rays or UV light that comes from the sun. It's invisible, but it can do harm to animals and people. Whatever is killing frogs could be a danger to other forms of life. Scientists are working hard to understand what is happening so that the beauty and usefulness of frogs will always be with us. It's important when we read books, especially nonfiction books that give us new and sometimes interesting or information that makes us think really deeply to go back and reread certain parts. In order to do that today, we're going to reread an excerpt or a little portion of the text again together and think about and wonder just some questions about this small excerpt from the book. This part we already read, but as I said, we're going to reread it so that we can figure, figure out some other questions to ask and wonderings. Frogs need homes to live in. When forests are cut down, frogs and other animals have no place to live. So they die out. Frogs that live in a limited area are especially threatened. The blue poison frog, for example, is found only in small parts of the forest in the South, Afri South American country of Suriname. If its home is destroyed by people harvesting wood, this frog will become extinct. Frogs have been on Earth for more than 150 million years, but today, frogs are disappearing quickly from some parts of the planet. No one is sure why. Some fear that the increase in ultraviolet light reaching Earth may be to blame. Whatever is killing frogs could be a danger to other life forms too. Scientists are working hard to understand what is happening so that the beauty 
and usefulness of frogs will always be with us. What did you learn about why some rainforest frog species are disappearing? Now that you've heard the excerpt twice, you might have some more wonderings. We heard a different part of the book this time, talking mainly about how, to, um, how the frogs are disappearing and maybe a theory about why. Let's see if we have any more wonderings. Some students have asked, will frogs go extinct? What can we do to help rainforest frogs? And we wonder if scientists will figure out how to save frogs. Those are questions that the book has not yet answered, but we can do a little bit of research on our own. Remember when you have questions that aren't answered in a nonfiction text or article that you're reading, there are other sources that we can go to to find answers. We can use the internet, we can go to Google, we can check out another book from the library or a friend. We can ask somebody who maybe lives in the community or has a job that has to do with animals, for example, a zookeeper, or some other person that's knowledgeable about a subject that you're reading about. Sometimes you can look in magazines or articles as well. But the internet is a great source, so if you have a phone or an iPad or a laptop at your house, you can use some search engines to type your questions and find them at your own house. I hope to find a lot of my answers about koalas in my book today, but if I don't, I know I can go to different sources to try and find them. Let's think more about our reading from today and yesterday and the day before about rainforest frogs. What did you learn about why some rainforest frog species are disappearing? Remember, if you can't think of an answer, it's, go, it's great to go back to the text and reread portions to find your answer. Again, what question was, what did you learn about why some rainforest frog species are disappearing? It says in the text that people are harvesting wood and that's destroying their habitats or homes. When you don't have a home to live in or a habitat to live in, it's really bad for your population and then some species die out. That's happened to other animal species before. Do you think it's important to protect frogs that are disappearing? This is a question that's an opinion question. There is no right or wrong answer. But I do want you to consider why or why not when you think about, do you think it's important to protect frogs that are disappearing? If you said yes, then you probably have a reason why. If you said no, I'm also sure that you have a reason why. Hopefully you can think of some text evidence from the book to back up your answer. For our final time today, I'm gonna to ask you to get your pencil, paper, and pack it if you have one from one of the lunch drop-off spots. If you have a packet, this is the, the, the paper that you're going to use today. It's from page 49, and it says, What I wonder about my text. I would like you to write your title up here. And then with your nonfiction book, mine is about koalas. Yours can be about anything. If you don't have a physical book like this, then you can use the internet to do your nonfiction reading today. Perhaps it's an animal that you're interested in. Maybe it's global warming that you're interested in, or the coronavirus. <laughs> you can look up anything that interests you. That's a subject that you would like to learn more about. Before you start your reading, I want you to pay attention to two wonderings. 
Look at the cover of your book or the article that you're reading. Think about your topic and wonder a couple of things before you even open up your book. My wondering, looking at the mother or father and its baby, was, I wonder if koala mothers have more than one baby at a time. The baby on her back made me think about the koala mothers having babies, and I wondered if maybe that's something that's common in the koala species for them to have more than one at a time. My other wondering was, I wonder how big koalas grow to be. I know I have this stuffed animal, but I don't know if that's the true size of a koala, and if so, was this a baby or an adult? So maybe my book will help me find the answers to those questions today. If you don't have a, a packet paper, then just use your own paper. Write the title of the book, the author, the subject, and write a couple of wonderings below that you can answer as you read the text. Maybe along the way you'll think of some more wonderings that you can add as you read, like we did each day this week with our fantastic frogs. Thank you.